Hello and welcome to Jep's Outdoor Adventures. I'm your host, Jep. In today's episode, we are going to be testing out another bear load. This time for the 45 ACP. These are some 255 grain hard casts, plus P, uh, from Underwood. I've had a lot of requests for this, and just recently I did a poll uh, seeing what ammo you guys wanted me to test out next. And although I didn't give you guys a lot of time to prepare for that or to even see it, I do apologize about that. We don't have a lot of time between realizing when we have an opportunity to film a video and actually filming it. It's usually fairly spur of the moment because of the weather. Uh, but you guys did give me some nice responses and I do appreciate that. It came down to this or the 220 grain hard cast from Buffalo Boar for the 10 millimeter and this guy won out. So. That's what we're going to be testing out here today. And uh, the firearm that we're using is a Rock Island Armory A1FS standard five inch barrel. I'm always asked that. Uh, it's a good 1911 base model, basically. So should do a pretty good job of simulating whatever you have. And uh, let's get right into it. Here we go. All right, first shot here with the standard bone barrier jugs test. Here we go. Very nice. Let's check that out. Okay, so as we can see here, got a good shot there. A little low, but got a good shot there on the masonite and a good hit here on the plywood. There's our exit hole, entrance hole, exit hole once again. So it looks like the bullet went through all seven jugs. It uh, went out the side right here on uh, the seventh jug. Had good inline penetration, however. But on the bright side, we did find one of the bullets. If it will focus, there we go, for the 40 that we just tested last time. Told you it would show up. So I'm gonna put that one in the pocket. Okay, it's about three minutes later. We just got the jugs test set up again. And guess what we found? We found the bullet. Turns out the gimbal will follow what I'm doing here. See, there's the jugs. And it was right about here on the ground. So how exactly I ended up here, I'm not sure. Maybe it bounced off the board and landed there. I'm not sure. But we did find the bullet. I always love when we do find the bullets because that allows us to weigh them and see just how well they did. But uh, minor, minor deformation, like most of the time, there's pretty much nothing to speak about. It's really good. Uh, I'm very, I'm actually very impressed with this round so far. Let's see how it holds up with the rest of the testing. Here we go. All right, second shot with the standard bone barrier jugs test. Here we go. Well, as you can see, it split open this jug right here. Hit a little higher up this time. As evidenced by the board there. Very nice. Looks like it hit just far enough apart to not really affect the board and skew the testing, so that's always nice. Very nice. Let's see here. I have my suspicions about what happened, but let's see. Obviously hit the sixth one here pretty nicely. And into the seventh. As we can see, turning the gimbal around. Still fairly new to this thing and it's a little uncomfortable to try and use, but I'm trying. Looks like it might have went out. Okay, third shot here with the standard bone barrier jugs test. Here we go. Let's check that out. Got a good shot here on the jug. Let's see. I moved the board over so we'd hit a brand new spot 
and got a good entry and a good exit. And once again, a good entry and a good exit. Let's see. Looks like out of the sixth and into the seventh. <laughs> well, I'd say it went right out, but no, how about that? Let's see if I can crane it here so you can see. It's too bright out for me to tell if the autofocus is working, but take my word for it, it's in there. We're gonna pour it out, see how it looks here. There we go, finally, autofocus is starting to work. Off and on. Anyway, the bullet looks good. No real deformation. Very nice. And of course, good penetration. In line too, which is always great. Okay, so now we're moving on to the second variation of the bone barrier here. Uh, as you can see, it is spotted here, but that's because I wanted to mark all the times that we've shot it to make sure that if we hit it uh, again, that we know it's actually a new shot. We moved to a newer section of the board that is untouched, so as to make sure that the results aren't skewed. Uh, what this is here is basically the same. We did move out the uh, other piece of masonite for a new one here, just to make sure that we're hitting a new spot. Uh, it's a smaller piece unfortunately but it's just there to try and simulate the hide so it's not quite as important as the main barrier so here we have instead of two three quarter inch thick pieces of plywood we have one half inch thick piece of very heavy duty plastic this is a heavy duty cutting board this is exactly what you'd find in a butcher shop uh, very very tough as you can see here we have made bullets go sideways before. That was the Underwood 140 grain Extreme Penetrators. It seems like Underwood does a much better job with the hard casts I've tested so far, not to say their other rounds aren't good, but that one just did not impress me much. Uh, but the rest of the test is exactly the same. We're going to end up picking that board up here and putting it back on, and then we're going to take our first shot. So here we go. Unfortunately, folks, I did not get that shot on camera. It told me it was recording, but it was not in fact. So we just took our first shot. And that's why I have the backup camera going, so. I apologize, but we got the shot. So here's the entrance point here. Only problem with this one is it's a big board and it's a little awkward to try and move around, but hopefully the camera's picking up. We got a good entrance hole here. Looks like it kind of went in at an angle, but it's hard to tell. Masonite got hit very nicely there. Let's try and move this over here. Good exit hole. Okay, so here's what looks like the fifth jug. I don't see anything in it. Looks like I wanted to go out here. Okay, we're gonna look around and see if we can find the bullet. All right, second shot here with the uh, second variation of the bone barrier jugs test. Here we go. Okay, let's check that out. I moved the masonite once again to make sure we're getting a nice new spot. Caused some excellent damage here. Here is the entrance point. Hopefully it's in focus. It's a very bright day today and it seems to be giving the autofocus a problem. There's the exit hole. I think it's in focus. If anything is off, I do apologize. So. Looks like it's kind of going off here. 
looks like this is what the fifth jug went into here looks like into the sixth yeah and yep it's in there so we're gonna pour it out All right, will it get in focus? There we are. And it's out of focus again. Anyway, bolt did pretty good. This time it did veer off a little bit into the left-hand column, but still six jugs of water. It wasn't too much of a turn. So overall, I'm pretty happy about that. So we're going to take another shot, but with our next bone barrier. You'll see what I mean. Here we go. All right, folks. So now we're on to the third variation of the bone barrier jugs test. I know you're probably sick and tired of hearing that now, but uh, this is a brand new test that we have just introduced with the last video where we tested out once again, Underwood's hard cast, but this time it was for the, uh, 40 Smith & Wesson. They were the 200 grain hard casts. I really like them. Uh, this test was introduced in that video and it had very surprising results. Not to spoil anything for everybody, but I will here. Uh, it actually made the hard cast mushroom a little bit. Uh, you'll have to watch that video to see what I mean, but we're going to see if that will happen once again here, if the round will stay true, if it's going to tumble, all that. This right here is going to simulate that very uh, brittle bone, but just because it's brittle does not mean that it isn't a tough test. Ceramic is used in body armor and some variations of it to absorb the impact. This will shatter and uh, gives the bullet quite a bit of difficulty. So we're going to see just how well it does today. We're going to take a step back and we're going to see how it does. So here we go. All right, first shot here with the third variation of the bone barrier jugs test. Here we go. Wow, that hit pretty hard. It actually colored that jug there. It actually looks kind of peachy. <laughs> wow. That, uh, it's not, it's not in focus. Come on, there you go. I'm filming with a Samsung smartphone, guys, so this isn't some really nice camera with wonderful autofocus. So that's partially why it's getting such a hard time today. Bright sun and then not really having a lot of sensor size is probably giving it a bit of a hard time, but it's working well. Let's see here, is it, did it really stop here? Or, I don't know, it looks like it might've gone through here. There we go. Let's see here. This is the fourth water jug, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, yeah, I think that's the bullet way down in there. Yeah, there it is. Okay, well, I guess you don't have to watch the 40 video to find out what I meant by that, because here it is again. Well, the bullet definitely deformed quite a bit. It did not penetrate as far as I thought it would. Again, I think that was four water jugs that it went through. It did have good inline penetration, though. I will give it that. Of course, we have no entrance and exit hole to really look at with the ceramic. But I'd say that was definitely the toughest test. Sorry, toughest test of the three here. So now you know why I'm trying to give you different tests. Is it really helps expand what you're looking at. The plywood does a good job of simulating that kind of dare I say, younger, kind of spongier bone. The plastic does a great job of simulating a very hard, but still very tough bone. And then this does a good job of simulating a much uh, more fragile bone, but it's very, very hard. So I think we're gonna call it here as far as the testing goes. We're gonna move on to the chronograph and we're gonna see just how well uh, the round does there. So here we go. All right, here we are with the chronograph. Let's see how accurate the advertised velocities are. Here we go. 918. 919. 
920, 912, 913. All right, guys, we're back out in the lodge, and I am joined by my lovely dog, Ushi, who decided that she would try and move away from me. Thankfully, I got a wide-angle camera here, so you are still on camera. Anyway, last time uh, I actually had her on the channel uh, was about four or five years ago. That was in my review of the Gerber Freescape Hatchet, which was <laughs> quite the video. Uh, if you guys want to see it, it's still up on the channel. It is quite the blast from the past. It is not what I call my proudest video, and that's for sure, but it does give you a view as to how far I've come here with my video making. But anyway, let's go over the numbers here. I got to edit the video, uh, and I'm, I have to say I'm quite proud of these rounds. I really like them. But the first thing I want to go over was the chronograph results. So as you saw, 918, 919, 920, 912, and 913 feet per second, which came out to an average of 916.4 feet per second. Now the advertised velocity is 925 feet per second. So 925, 916, that's very, very close, I have to say. Uh, I think the round did great. In that respect, uh, it's right about where it's supposed to be, which is always nice. Now, the bullets that we recovered came in at 245.6 grains, 245.2 grains, and 245.3 grains, which came out to an average of 245.36 grains. Now, here they are here. I don't know how well you can see because you're a little bit away, but... Uh, here they are. The mushroom round uh, came in at 236 grains. Now, I did not measure the diameter of this bullet before coming out here, but I will as soon as I get back in, so I'm going to annotate right here. Uh, this is the diameter of the bullet at its widest point, so across. Uh, so you get to see just how much the round mushroomed. It did mushroom a good bit. Uh, given it started out at 0.45 uh, inches in diameter, uh, it, it did mushroom a good bit. Now, the uh, foot-pounds of force, what we do is we take the average chronograph number and the average bullet weight, and we come up with the average foot-pounds of force that you should expect with this round. Now, that average foot-pounds of force would be 457 foot-pounds of force per shot and a Taylor KO of 14. Now the Taylor KO or Taylor Knockout um, is a great way of figuring out just how hard that round hits with, you know, just, just how much force it's really hitting with. Uh, Foot-pounds of force, uh, as we will talk about in a minute, does mean a lot, but it doesn't mean quite as much as people make it out to mean. Taylor KO of 14 I think is pretty good. Uh, you gotta keep in mind though that most handguns are not gonna reach over say 30 or 35 uh, most of them are going to be underneath that. Actually, I think the 450 Bushmaster hits with about 35, and the 444 Marlin hits with about Taylor KO 40. So, 14 is not too bad. Now, I do want to compare this to Buffalo Boar's 255 grain uh, plus P hardcast, because I've been asked that a lot, you know, what do you think of Underwood? What do you think of Buffalo Boar's? You know, which one would you carry? Well, now that I've tested it out, I can say I would have no problem carrying this round. Uh, but the Buffalo Boar may just edge it out in a way. Let me let me go over numbers here. So, the bullets came out to 231.25 grains on average for Buffalo Boar's round. Now, you need to keep in mind, we only recovered two bullets, okay? But, 231.25 compared to 245. So, 231, 245, there's a little bit of a difference there. Uh, Underwood definitely retained more weight. That might be because of the Brunel hardness. I do not know what the Brunel hardness is for either one of these rounds. It might be because of the high-tech coating. I don't know. Uh, at the end of the day, though, it did retain more weight, so I do have to hand it to Underwood there. But when you look at the average feet per second and the average force that the rounds hit with, Buffalo Board does kind of edge it out. Uh, the average feet per second for Buffalo Board's round was 958 feet per second whereas this one was 916. 
So 958 to 916, again, you see a little bit of a difference, but the average foot-pounds of force for the buffalo board came out to 520 compared to 457 for this loadout. So that, that's where you do see a bit of a difference, you know, 457 to 520. Again, it doesn't mean everything, but it does mean something. You want as much as you can get with foot-pounds of force. So that is something to think about. Uh, and it came out to a Taylor KO 15, whereas this round was 14. So it does edge out this round just by a little bit, but not to the point where I go, eh, it's a landslide victory, because it isn't. Uh, it's pretty close. I'd say that either round is going to do you just fine. I do know that this round did quite well, up against a very difficult test. And I do know that this round has solid numbers, it's right where it's supposed to be, good penetration and performance. I honestly really like this ammunition, and I can highly recommend it. So, anyway guys, please feel free to let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you for watching all the way through, not everybody does, and it's evident by their comments, so I do appreciate it when you guys watch all the way through, believe me. Uh, please feel free to like this video, share this video wherever you'd like, uh, or to an individual, you name it, it does help out a lot. And please feel free to hit that subscribe button and that bell icon so you'll be notified every time. I come out with a new outdoor themed video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.